folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkart, a bartender in the OSR, a main proprietor of the Tenkart's Tavern blog. With me for this episode just off screen is my wife, Rach, because it's a bit of a talk about consent in gaming. And it's kind of kicked off by uh, an anonymous open letter that uh, Owen Casey Stevens shared on his blog. I believe he was former. Uh, creator for, or writer for Pathfinder, um, and it was to Eric Mona, and basically it was dealing with slavery and the Pathfinder default setting, in which uh, the, the storyline in organized play, the uh, players were supposed to organize the slaves to rebel, revolt, and overcome, to free themselves. And uh, for the the anonymous letter writer who's also a creator or freelancer for uh, Paizo, um, I guess you could say it was a triggering experience or he felt very uncomfortable with the idea of slavery. And since one of their products that was used in organized play, including a price list for slaves, again, I don't understand why you would think that would be appropriate, but all right, major fail there. Um, <coughs> It, it actually makes me think that especially in organized play or convention play, something of the sort of an X card where if you move into situation and somebody somewhere on Emerald kind of said, well, you know, spiders could be triggering and I don't want to hear about giant spiders. Um, I think that there's a buy-in when you play fantasy role-playing games that allows for certain conceits. But slavery can be triggering or upsetting to some, I guess, as in a narrative reach. I mean, that's probably... Yeah. But, you know, <clears throat> I... Like some people might not want to deal with that... Imagery? Imagery and topic while they're playing a game. Which, again... And they have the right to decide, do they want to do that? So, you know... For someone who's running a game, it's really important to start with the first step of consent. It's like, yes, the first step to somebody consenting is the fact that they are coming to the table, that they're signing on to your game, whatever it is. Um, but when the situation goes to um imagery around slavery, imagery around other, like, types of trauma. What? What? Um, it's important for people to kind of know that there is a possibility that this could come up during the game. So that this way, you have that initial ability to opt out. And that's, and that's a fair point. I mean, my personal uh, opinion, I don't think there are very many, if any, active role players that were slaves in their lives, at least as we define it. No, but but but, I, I, but I'm going to say is, it's still a traumatic I, I, part of your history. It's still I, no, racial trauma. No, no, I understand. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not discounting that, but what I'm yeah. going to say is you know, we're saying or Paizo is saying that like we're going to write slavery out of all of our worlds. I'm not going to explain the backstory. That's fine. It's, it's, it's their IP. They do as they wish. I'm not complaining about that. But I think we do have players that are actively role playing, actively involved in it, in, in, in the community, actively involved in gaming, mm -hmm. and organized play that are past victims of violent assaults, yes. and, uh, attempted homicides. Maybe there were people in their family that uh, were killed in violent acts. Yeah. Sex, they're victims of sexual assault, whether from within the family or outside the family. And these are all they could be victims of of robbery, right? All these things. That, I mean, when you think of a fantasy RPG, we call them jokingly murder hobos because your PCs are generally going out there righting wrongs by killing evil creatures. Or, and these are often intelligent evil creatures. So where do you, where do you draw the line? And that's why I think something like an X card, especially an organized play, especially at a convention, when you're gaming with people that you don't personally know. That this is 
you know, oh, sure. a, a, that's, a group of strangers coming together. Thing to have, you know, like it, it that contributes to trauma informed gaming. You right. know, and it sounds like some of these companies. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to be. Trauma they're all put that trying, awkward. Can I finish? Being Sorry. Here? Thank you. So, um, it, yeah, it's our our own little McLaughlin crew. If anybody's old enough to remember. Oh God, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm not so, finished. <laughs> oh, Jesus age. Um. So yeah, like um, when I think these companies are trying to be trauma informed um but you can't completely sanitize thank you these games um it's still you know have the conflict and and the play and like even some of the, like maybe the empowering or therapeutic aspects of when we play these games you know some of the release that sometimes we find you know when we try on some other type of persona or some other type of character um but definitely like the x cards or whatever you want to call them anything that you know you can sort of like have up or down you know to be able to show that game master and the other people that you're playing with that all right i need to opt out of this one right and, and which is which is actually fine see I, it helps it, people be able to protect themselves and and be empowered about it. As Rachel said, though, Natural. you can't over you can over sanitize, and if you over sanitize, if you remove all evil, all conflict, mm -hmm. or all the ability for your characters to be heroic in the face of despotism and anything else, mm -hmm. then really, what what are you gaming for? What what is what are your what are your characters trying to overcome? Every work of fiction, there are multiple aspects fighting the 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 main character, preventing them, or the, the conflict is part of it. And it seems to me is that in recent years, whether it's from Wizards of the Coast or Paizo, that they've been trying to remove a lot of this conflict because they're afraid of offending um, anybody. And you're not offending everybody; you're offending some people or you're uh, potentially triggering or upsetting some people. And I think that the ability for somebody who is uncomfortable to opt out, again, I think when you're, when you're gaming with an established gaming group, you have your own uh, feelings about what everybody else is and can do. You might, it might not come up as much. You might, you know, you might say, say, listen, uh, just so you all know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I, I really like to avoid anything having to do with sexual assault. I mean, in fact, that was an issue with me. I could probably tell my gaming group that because we game regularly. What is verboten for me personally? Hey, listen, it's going to come up. That's probably a session that I'd like to miss if we can't right. write it out. Right. And that's fine. But you don't have that option per se of knowing people when you're gaming in an organized play or you're gaming at a convention. These are are, are hodgepodge groups of yeah. individuals without prior established connections and friendships. And yes, I'm finding myself saying, and this is going to blow certain minds, I'm sure, that something along the lines of an X card, if, especially if, I mean, I, I've heard the horror story of the uh, GM at a convention that decided to have an adventure that dealt with uh, one of the player characters getting basically raped by a machine. Ooh. And this somehow was supposed to be part of the storyline. Um, I wouldn't run that in my own home group. I certainly wouldn't run it for a bunch of strangers. So there are people out there who don't have a common concept, common sense of where that line yeah, is. Yeah, it doesn't really sound <clears throat> fun. No. Uh, you know, so... Yeah, you know, you're talking about some basics, you know, um, when you play as a group and it's an ongoing campaign, yeah? Yeah. That um, you're able to maybe set certain ground rules. Here's where I'm uncomfortable going. Here's where I'm uncomfortable going. Right, okay, let's not worry about it. We now know what each other, can, you know, what right. everybody can, you know, is comfortable with and let's just gear it so that everybody has fun, you know? And then, 
but the X card really does give that element of choice, you know, like the whole uh, basis of trauma is that things happen to you against your will, whether it's trauma or slavery, if that's part of like, you know, generations ago or whatever, the whole concept is that you didn't have choice around that. So the X cards give people choice to be able to engage with it in a way that they feel safe and to be able to protect themselves, which yeah. they didn't always have because of the trauma. Which I think is a very, you know, again, I, I brought Rachel on this because I wanted you to hear a perspective that isn't mine. Again, gamer for 40 plus years, my perspective is going to be different from somebody who came into gaming I don't know, half a dozen years ago, yeah. mostly. Um, and she gains her conventions. Now, she gains her conventions mostly with people that she knows. But Yeah, I need at least one that I know. <laughs> but um, it, it's... Generally. She understands, too, the idea of um, gaming with strangers. And when you game with strangers, you also are going to be probably a little bit more guarded in what you allow and show of your inner self than maybe you would show with your friends. Yes. And what you're allowed. So there's a whole, there's a, there's a lot going on here. And I don't think you can solve the, the issue by saying, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to just, uh, we're going to remove all references to any kind of slavery from our world going forward. It doesn't really solve yeah, and, the issue. and I like the idea, like maybe maybe certain people found it therapeutic to fight slavery. Right. I mean, you know, like maybe people heroic. found that empowering and like exciting, like, yeah, we're gonna take this shit down, you know? And, and, I, and that, Yeah, that, and that can be good. So like I guess it's all in what you do with it. Right. You know, I, you have to be I guess the competency of the game master too. Yeah, it's, it's how you managing put... the group. You know, like so interesting. Like, <laughs> I'm coming from a psychotherapy background, um, mental health background, and yeah, you know, like people can be fragile, but there's certain things that sometimes people want to look at and you know feel that they need to look out and so, and sort of like act through you know, with the possibility of a different outcome. So, again, my perspective on, on X cards have changed because I think they allow the potential of content that could potentially offend or, or trigger somebody to allow it to be at least an option. And if people don't want it, they can say, listen, we gotta, can we opt out? And they can opt out as opposed to saying, all right, well, this is a whole, you know, this doesn't exist anymore because some people are upset. Now, again, my, my thoughts are um, we have people that have survived, again, traumatic experiences being physically and sexually assaulted. They've been the victims of crime. Mm -hmm. uh, the hell, they, uh, right, even the slavery. They could have been kidnapped, right? I understand it. These are situations that are unique to right. every individual. Trauma and violence touches everybody so, in our culture, you, you know? I, so, I, I don't think you can. But you can't sanitize. You can't. If you sanitize it, you have nothing left. Yeah. So I think you have to be able to adjust it on a per group, per person uh, level. As opposed to doing a big wipe, I don't see how the big wipe actually works in the long run. Mm. Because n now that this has been removed, um, what's the next thing that's going to get removed because somebody finds it triggering? And I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm sure there's things that will trigger me that I'm not even sure about. Oh, actually, I do. I do know it would for me. It would be. I mean, uh, you're already not impressed by the rape machine. Um, no, I wasn't. But <laughs> you know, if if it was something, if it was a storyline dealing with the. Uh, you know, the loss of a child, having lost uh, a child when I was working on my, my job. Sure. I was very traumatic. So that was something I carried with me for years. So I understand. But if it was a storyline going along that line, I, my home group, and I, I'd feel uncomfortable with it, I might just say, hey, listen, I'm going to 
drop out for a bit. You guys finish this part of the uh, adventure, and I'll, I'll drop back in. And if we were at a convention, I might just say, hey, listen, this isn't for me. Um, I, I need to take a break. That's being an adult, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not going to change uh, what everybody else experiences because of my experience. I'm going to change the experience for me. And I think that's really where it has to come from. Yes. So, uh, listen, I thank you for listening to the two of us because I wasn't really sure how this was going to go. Um, again, it's an exciting time in gaming, especially, you know, that, that they want to make it more trauma-informed and that they want to make it more accessible to many different people with different right. experiences. So, yeah, these are the things that, you know, um, come up for debate as change happens. So. I mean, and I'm not being facetious when I say, but I'm wondering if uh, in the future, whether it's near or far, you can sit down at a gaming table at a convention or an organized play, and you're going to have to sign a consent form uh, that, you know, there may be topics or uh, circumstances or situations that crop up that you may find personally upsetting, triggering. Um, I and maybe even like, if you're if you're a GM that, that you want to understand a little more about agency and consent and how that works for people, um, and that you know um, it's not just you sit at the table and you sign your consent form and everything is like good. Consent is something that oh. comes in steps. You know, as more things as the game progresses, as you know, different. As different things happen. And that and is, no, I'm not saying, oh, you have to ask for consent. No. Every, every roll of the dice. Yeah, no. Change of the scene. We need consent. Can you, <laughs> does anybody have problems with spiders or undead? Anybody? Uh, no, no. Oh, you're, you're triggered by spiders. All right. Well, all right. Well, I've got to change the spiders. All right. Centipedes? How you, oh, centipedes are even worse. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be some ability to buy in but again there's some experiences that you just on a personal level you can't separate yourself from and i think there has to be a way to under to understand as a game master um running a game that you have individual players who on an individual level may need to opt out as opposed to having a blanket statement of hey as a publishing company we've just opted out of this whole uh concept ever even existing i don't know how effective that really is it's not empowering it's not empowering the, the, the people they're not empowering the players like ray said maybe there was a, a right large they amount don't of, get to make their decision about it right it's being made for them and in this case, it's being made for them because of... And it's from a good place. They're, people are trying to be considerate and respectful. You know, people, you know, these these companies are, are trying hard to, you know, be inclusive and, you know, let everybody have fun. So it's right. not coming from they want to control everything. I think it's coming from, you know, wanting to create trauma-informed spaces and, you know... The intent, being able to do that through different means the in, instead of the intention, showing everything. The intention is a good intention, yes. but the methodology might not be the right method. Right. You know, we'll, we'll, again, we're just too... That's the question. Is it the right method? You right? know, definitely sound off in the comments. Yeah. You know, and let us know, oh, what do you think about this whole thing? And, you know, some people would say, oh, this is social justice to have agency and consent come into this, you know, and trauma, la, 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 la. But these are things that impact our everyday life and lead to so many of the misunderstandings that we have. So, yeah. You can leave us a voicemail, 347 <laughs> 509 you can leave a message in the comments section. If you're listening on Anchor, you can uh, leave us a message on Anchor. Again, thank. We, we, this was something we were talking about. We never had an episode yet last night. It's a long story for that one. But oh, we yeah. Were, but we were talking about this while we weren't doing the episode. We were having a conversation about this. And 
Rachel and I approached this from different directions, but we kind of come to similar conclusions. I thought that was going to be an interesting thing for us to cover on this. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Um, as I'm always telling you, we are still in the midst of the world of COVID. Please use your common sense. Be safe, be well, God bless. Roll those dice. And I'll be back again tonight. Live stream, 8 p.m. Talking Crit, Mike Badalato and Lala. Who is Lala? You will find out tonight. All right. Mm.